With the regulation of cannabis comes testing requirements that regulators deem appropriate to help keep the public safe. In the past few years, heavy metals testing has hit organic commercial cannabis growers extremely hard. Heavy metals are present in a lot of natural products used for gardening. They are deemed safe to use in organic production of food crops, but somehow once used in cannabis production, they pose health risks, at least in regulators' eyes. This is curious. Let's dive deeper into heavy metals and cannabis production, and I'll discuss some things we are seeing as a company at the epicenter of this issue. Phytoremediation means that cannabis is very good at sucking up things like heavy metals from soils. You'll see through final product heavy metals testing that every cultivar will suck up different amounts of different metals. It is never the same across the board. The only constant is that cannabis is extremely good at accumulating heavy metals in its leaves, stems, and buds. When looking at cannabis heavy metals reports, you want to pay attention to the detection limit on the reports. The detection limits on heavy metals reports can be as high as 20 parts per million, but as low as 0 .001 parts per million. This is a massive range that could ultimately leave you, the grower, with a failed test. The problem with higher limits, like say 5 ppm or higher in arsenic, is that this product could test out at 4.99 ppm and still pass the testing requirements. A product with that much arsenic could accumulate and give you a failed test. For this reason, we choose testing with lower limits. Our typical ppm limit is 0.25 ppm and can be as low as 0.001 ppm. Detection limits for registering products is typically higher than we would like to see. Depending on the product, they can range from 5 ppm up to 20 ppm. We've seen repeatedly that these higher limits, especially with arsenic, can pose widespread problems in gardens. This is why we retest with a lower detection limit test. We want to try to be more precise with the information we have on hand that can then help our customers be better informed. Since testing can run multiple hundreds of dollars per test, product companies don't like to test their products very often. Sometimes you may request a test from a company and the results could be years old. With wide variances in batches, this is of little help to the customer. This is why we're doing widespread testing, spending tens of thousands of dollars to have our own database of heavy metals reports on hand. With this information, we can help customers choose products with low heavy metal loads for their gardens. So here I have testing from a company that has a detection limit of 10 ppm for arsenic. This is way too high of a limit for us to trust. I'm not here to blast anyone, but this product is widely used by many cultivators. After we sent in our samples for testing, we were actually shocked at the report. This product had an arsenic level of 58.28 parts per million. Because of this, we're going to send in more samples and get an average to see if this, if this was an outlier event. This result is concerning though, but more investigation does need to be done. Here's another test from a manufacturer for a different product. They happen to be using the same lab we are. I'm using this example to show you how there can be variances in batches. Their test they sent has a lead at a below detectable limit of 0.25 parts per million. But our results lead came out at 2.68 parts per million. This example highlights that up-to-date testing is necessary to truly understand the heavy metals load a product may contain. Water, air, the building itself, amendments, fertilizers, your soil, pretty much anything can make you fail. Overloving your plants will make you fail. Even using biochar at a high rate can make you fail. Biochar will absorb metals, and if the rate of use is too high in your soil, you can get a pH swing, which dumps heavy metals, and then your plants end up failing. Ultimately, every product you use needs to have heavy metals testing done. No question we're seeing arsenic fails the most, with lesser amounts of cadmium and maybe a handful of lead fails. I did also see a random nickel fail in Michigan from a guy trying to remedy a situation that ended up being an environmental issue. That being said, arsenic is the main concern when it comes to what organic growers are dealing with when it comes to heavy metals testing and failures. 
We test our soil regularly and have worked for many years to stay ahead of the situation. We keep results on file and our arsenic levels regularly show up non-detectable with a 0.25 parts per million detection limit. The bulk of our customers are commercial growers, so we focus, focused on this pretty hard. Whereas other soil companies either focus on home growers or they sell the bulk of their product in states that don't even test for heavy metals. Yes, there are states that don't test cannabis for heavy metals. If you do a little digging, you'll see other living soil companies beginning to test and release low heavy metals soil formulas. This should tell you all you need to know. We are not in a position where we need to do this because we have been making this a priority for multiple years now. That being said, I'm glad more companies are finally addressing this issue. There's no way to make a blanket statement on this, but a lot of what you see is geared towards home growers that don't need to pass testing. I would always be cautious about any new products or techniques being used in your commercial garden. I wanted to give a real world example of what we've seen people fail for in heavy metals. First and foremost, your soil. We've seen people using soil that was already hot from the start fail for heavy metals. Whether it be native soil or a soilless media, this can and does happen a lot. Another example is contaminated well water, especially if you're in certain areas of Oklahoma, can lead to failed heavy metals testing. We've seen it multiple times. We saw a customer use four inches of rice holes on top of their pots as a mulch. Coupled with too much feeding of heavy metal containing products, even though they were outdoors, they failed hard for arsenic. We had another customer fail because of weekly applications of composted cotton burrs as a tea that was soil drenched. They failed for arsenic because cotton tends to be high in arsenic. The number one thing we see people fail for is over applying teas, top dress, and the like. What I like to call over loving your plants. Too much of a good thing is indeed a bad thing. The native soil outside could be the issue, even if you aren't growing in it. There was a local hydro grower that was using RO water that was failing for heavy metals. They tested everything, and then after testing the gravel parking lot, they realized the wind was blowing the parking lot dust in the building, and they were failing from the dust. We tested a non-contaminated topsoil from Oklahoma at two different locations, and they both came up to about 4.5 parts per million of arsenic. If this dust blew on your crop, you could fail for arsenic. This shows that even if you aren't planting in the soil, the soil can create issues for you and make you fail for heavy metals testing. This honestly isn't even worth the time to discuss because the rules are the rules. It's just a straw man argument instead of actually dealing with the issues. Truthfully though, lawmakers have zero idea what they're doing and the limits set are purely arbitrary making growing cannabis more difficult for organic farmers disproportionately over hydroponic growers. But the rules are the rules and we work within the framework given to us. The key to this is to not put in more heavy metals than can be extracted from the soil by the plants. It's that simple. You need to test every single input in your garden, including your water, and develop a program that can grow your crops while keeping a low heavy metal load in your soil. On top of this, some cultivars may not be able to be grown because of their ability to uptake metals at higher amounts than other cultivars. Also, you should be testing your soil for heavy metals between each round to see if the levels are steady, going up, or going down. At the time of making this video, we have not seen a cure-all for heavy metals uptake in cannabis. We have seen anecdotally that things like humic acids, silica, or even keeping micronutrients topped off could help with this issue but this so far is just speculation. Way more research needs to be done on this subject to get a concise answer. Flushing is a first step that should be looked at. This all depends on how high the metals are though. Since flushing is pretty much a pain in the ass for living soil growers indoor, doing a run and pulling those metals out to a sacrificial crop may be the better option. Outdoors, flushing could work quite well. Ultimately, if you have metals that are too high, you may have to replace your soil. This is where it makes sense to either test every input yourself 
or use a company that is doing the R&D and the testing to help ensure you are re-amending with the intent to keep heavy metal loads low. Our first goal in everything we do is to look at the heavy metals load of any product we suggest you use. If we don't know for sure what the heavy metals content is, we won't recommend it. I can't speak to this directly, but it is a topic that needs to be further studied. Choosing arbitrary numbers does no one any good though, and does not further us learning what could be a safe limit for anything in cannabis production. It really is up to the uneducated state agencies and legislators, which is a scary thought. My final take on the subject is if you're a commercial grower, you should establish a budget for heavy metals testing of all inputs, as well as regularly testing your soil for heavy metals. If you're a smaller grower that can't afford this, then you'll need to work with a company that is doing this testing on the products they either manufacture or sell. Ultimately, you as the grower are in charge of what products are used and at what rate they're used in your garden. We do, however, see growers passing testing consistently, running no-till living soil gardens. For now, the rules we have, we have to deal with. And maybe down the road, things will change, but I wouldn't count on legislators and regulators to become educated on the subject and actually make rules based off of sound science anytime soon.